Let's move on, and we can finally move uh, on to some some discussions uh, on uh, on STEM. We will move a little bit from STEM to STEM and space, and then more to space uh, as a platform for cooperation. But we definitely have heard from the speakers so far that uh, uh, STEM is a very critical aspect, and uh, we would like to invite. Um, is, sorry, is very critical aspect uh, for uh, uh, not just education uh, but also for the industry. Uh, so um, we would like to invite for. For the first panel, uh, uh, which is called STEM or not STEM, which I think is a very cool name. Uh, first of all, we would like to invite um, Talis Juchna, Vice Rector uh, for Research at Riga Technical University. Talis, welcome. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, we are also inviting to the panel um, Inters Palamex, a sales manager from Tieto Every. A company who is very much involved in, in technologies, yes. Uh, we know about Riga Technical University, so I didn't give a special introduction. Yeah? I hope you don't mind. And uh, Anna Anderson, a founder of Riga Tech Girls. Anna, yes, you're welcome. Um, so um, you have some microphones here as well. So uh, I have an honor to moderate uh, the, the discussion. I hope you don't mind if I, if I stay here, because then at least they can see me. <laughs> um, so um, uh, this is a part for, uh, for a panel discussion where we can discuss the importance of STEM. We can argue, we can discuss, we can, uh, we can disagree, we can ask uh, questions to the members. But first, maybe uh, let's start with a short introduction from every member of the, of the panel, and maybe they give introduction of what they are actually doing in everyday life and how this everyday life is uh, related with STEM. Talis, maybe we can start with you. All right, thank you. First of all, uh, thank you for inviting me. And I also was listening to the speakers before, and especially from Malta University. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say that at uh, Riga Technical University, we kind of uh, taking similar uh, way. Uh, actually, we are part of Design Factory, which is in Delta University. And the idea actually is th that uh, we, we try to encourage in the study process uh, to really learn the skills which are needed both for engineer uh, but also for entrepreneur and so we have uh, a number of uh, programs for students they could be both uh, uh, in uh, inside the curriculum but also extra curriculum where students are working in the team, and uh, you mentioned one, you know, and the, uh, we have guys here also from one of the space team, where they're working on the very challenging technology project, including also, uh, for example, uh, launching the, the rocket. And in this way, we see this is how we can encourage them really to think about uh, future technologies, not just to think, but really having hands-on type of experience. So we have more than 1,000 students in, engaged in, in seven programs. I can talk about each of the, the program, but I think one is which is vertical integrated project is quite interesting because the, the idea there is to uh, have uh, something which you have to build in a long run, like five years, and then like it was mentioned about, for example, satellite. So this is, this is uh, one activity. Uh, and uh, I think this is very critical because as it was also mentioned by one of the speaker that the dropout rate is, is a problem. I mean, if you think about engineering students in general, actually we are not doing so, so bad. I mean, in terms of percentage, what, what, how many kids are uh, joining engineering education but the dropout rate is, is a problem. We can talk about different reasons for that, but one, I think, is to increase interest about uh, STEM education while you are studying. So the second thing what we did, we also, uh, in order to encourage more of the kids joining uh, STEM education, we has, have established our school, engineering school. It's, it's quite prominent school right now. I mean, it's a very high competition uh, there to, to get into school, so these kids, they are starting on, on uh, grade 10, and then already at the, uh, when, as soon as they're joining the school, 
they are becoming part of our university because they are working in a lab, they have a special research project, so we bring them early in the stage so there's about 50% of something like that are actually joining our university STEM programs. So the just, just two, two examples how, how we are doing, but I can explore more. Thank you, thank you. Um, Anna, maybe you can introduce uh, what, what, what is your field of activities <laughs> and what the Riga Tech Girl does, maybe you can give a short. Yeah, sure. Um, lovely to be here. I think it's uh, super important that we have this type of events and discussions and uh, also lovely to hear the experience from Finland. I think it's a, a great example to follow. Um, so I'm Anna Andersson. I'm uh, running Riga Tech Girls, which is an NGO. And um, Riga Tech Girls is aimed at bringing more diversity into the technology world. Um, so we've uh, started with uh, more focus on IT, but uh, we know that actually the future lies in STEM in general and in, in engineering, and also diversity is not very high in these fields. So um, this is what we've been working on uh, more lately, that we want to uh, have also initiatives and programs that help support uh, more women and more girls get interested in STEM and also in space and uh, engineering. Um, and uh, we've, like this summer, actually, we went to uh, CERN and uh, experienced with our own eyes how amazing this place is, how uh, inspiring it can be. And uh, also European Space Agency, I think, is something that we need to promote more among the students here in Latvia. Um, so from our side, we're working on diversity, and uh, that means uh, gender diversity, but also other inclusive uh, parts. Um, so connected to space, uh, we've been uh, doing summer school for girls. Uh, already uh, this has been the second time this summer where we ran a summer school about space. Uh, so also girls, they're super excited about going into space, about fig figuring out what you need to set up a base on Mars. How do you engineer a landing platform to land on the moon or, uh, or another planet? So all of these... Uh, kind of inspirational activities are uh, important early in life so that the kids then afterwards go to the engineering uh, school and, and, and go to Riga Technical University, and not just uh, um, boys who maybe are playing with rockets from uh, very <laughs> first years, but uh, everyone who might contribute to this. Um, so that's our focus, diversity and uh, developing tech skills uh, and also kind of bringing awareness and uh, um, inspiration to diverse audiences about uh, technology, space and uh, STEM in general. Thank you, Anna. Inter, so maybe you are a business representative. Can you, can you tell us shortly what, what, is, what is your company doing and what are you doing in the company? Yes. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting us, Dieter Evry here. I represent company. We are a global IT related player. And we feel ourselves like, uh, you can see here, like um, developers of digital future. And uh, for sure, to develop this future, we uh, really highly appreciate knowledge about STEM. Uh, this abbreviature we are not using so often, but uh, we are talking more about uh, uh, skills what is related to problem solving, um, critical thinking, collaboration, uh, also design thinking. All this knowledge is uh, very valuable for us because we are involved in um, a huge, even state uh, level projects. And uh, we are working closely also with commerce sector, with some manufacturers, some wholesalers, and they are involved in the process of digital transformation and for that also STEM is very important. Okay, good. So uh, as for every panel, uh, you're always welcome to ask questions and you always have a first hand in asking the questions. So whenever you have a question, excellent, oh my God. Find the first event when we have a question uh, from the audience before uh, the moderator has a, can ask a question. Eva, yes, you're most welcome to ask a question. Uh, hi, uh, my question is concerning kids. I have two boys and I've seen that whatever it takes them to programming courses, to robotic courses, they often are the only 
only uh, only boys in there, no girls at all. I've talked to other parents as well. Um, for example, Andre Sambans, who is a wonderful scientist, having very smart girl, and this girl is often the only girl in um, like STEM classes. My question is, what should be done in uh, I don't know working with the parents and society as a whole as uh, STEM could be considered a career for a girl and kind of at least introduction for a girls. I guess I'll take this uh, this question. Thank you. Yeah, well, yes, Anna, you should take on this. <laughs> um, so this is our experience as well, and this is why Rigate Girls exist because we want to talk about uh, bringing more diversity in programming, in technology, and also space and STEM. Um, so we really see that. Um, uh, in for some reasons, uh, there are more boys interested in these fields and. Uh, the reasons uh, have been studied internationally and also locally and uh, the mo the main reason actually are role models and um the uh, view of the society so stereotypes of what does an astronomer look like what does a programmer look like and uh, a lot of the girls don't associate themselves because we don't see a lot of programmers women in the media on the covers we see that women are doing other things we see uh, on the on the shiny covers we see actresses singers um, media representatives we're actually we're pretty in, in pretty good shape when we look at the politics and politics, we have quite many women in politics. We also have women in business, which is very good. But in STEM, in technology, the percentage is still quite low. So this, uh, what we need to show and we need to express in every way to the girls around us in schools is that they can be anything they want to be and that technology is the future and it's going to be interesting for them and exciting for them. So we need to make them believe that they can do it and unfortunately, this is something that we're failing at, um, that what we see that um, especially in the age that starts from eight years old, uh, when girls are in the tween age, for them, it's super important what others think. So they start really scanning the environment. If I do this, how will everybody react to that? How will they see me? And if they feel like if I will go to a programming course, others will see me as geeky, as not such a you know a popular girl, I will not be uh, ranked and I will not be valued that highly, they, that is immediately a red flag for them, unconsciously. So we should show them that being in technology programming is it's cool it's fun it's exciting and uh, and that way we will get more girls there and uh, it's very hard actually for girls to be in these courses if you're the only girl in the room if you're the only woman in the room it's always a hard uh, place to be. Um, that's why we, with Rigatecos, we create these summer schools for girls, where there are girls only, where they can see, they can meet other girls who are that same excited about space and programming. And that's the environment that they can develop in. But of course, the ideal, the ideal way would be that we have 50-50, you know, um, same amount of girls, same amount of boys in these, in these clubs, in these uh, courses. Cool. Dallas, you want to add? Yeah, and I think just to add, I think we also have to, you know, deliver the message that technologies have been moving, you know, last hundred years away from heavy lifting. You don't have to do have a physical work if you are engineer. I mean, I still is somewhere in the mind. When you do design of building, you do in 3D. I mean, you work with a mouse, right? So, so I think this somehow stays in, in a head, maybe from our old days, that there's something to do with physical force in engineering. It's not much to do with it anymore. And, and this is, first of all, just to explain that technologies have been evolving, evolving you know, during the, 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 the last century. And second, I think, is that trying to put uh, the, the kids uh, or the students, boys and girls in the teams, because then you can see the added value, you know, from different, let's say, psychological and experiences and everything. And then the girls see that they have also some advantage, maybe in some cases, the way they communicate, etc. So not just to leave them working alone, but let them work in the teams. Thank you, Tiles, but I should not agree about working with mouse. It can also be quite uh, quite hard, especially if the window breaks down uh, or the MS Team doesn't work. So 
we could argue about that. Um, yet, um, on, on just to add on, on what Anna said, uh, we also have in CESIS a good experience of organizing space camps and uh, as, even astronaut camps uh, for, for kids of school age. And we actually see a lot of girls interested in the topic. Uh, we had, I think, uh, my colleagues can uh, Correct me, it's like 40% was 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 girls. So and and they've been they've been really really active and very expired later. You, I can show the pictures of them happily launching rockets and building rockets. So um, it's fun. But um, still, to, to discuss more about uh, the the STEM and and the need for STEM, um, we. We in the society, we kind of been accepting that, yes, we need more, we need more STEM, but maybe not always it has been explained why. Why do we need more STEM? So maybe we can, we can start from, from business perspective. Uh, maybe you can tell why, what's, what's really the need? Why do you interest need uh, more uh, spa uh, st space, sorry, uh, STEM students? Yes, uh, I can try to answer, yes. Uh, mm. On our daily basis, we in this, huge IT projects, we have uh, such roles that uh, analyst, solution architect, developer, project manager, and all of these people need these skills that I mentioned before, that they need to understand uh, the problem, they need to understand the business processes at client side, they need somehow to, 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 to put that together and create solution for that. It, it means they, knew, they need to have these skills, what I mentioned before, creativity, col collaboration, and all these things to, to solve these problems for the client, I believe. Okay. Yeah, let, let me just ask you maybe if even more from business perspective. Uh, do you need more STEM students in your business to grow or, or you're fine? Yes, I, I must admit that we are now like uh, our growth is under, you know, we, we cannot grow because we do not have resources. That's that's real life for us. With and resources, you mean the st students, students, people who know who are with knowledge in STEM. Uh, right now, we have like uh, forty open vacancies in theater every, and half of them is related to STEM knowledge and skills. Forty, forty, four zero. Okay, yeah, good. Uh, Talis, maybe you could add on this. Uh, you know firsthand. Uh, you are also working uh, as a, from Riga Technical University with multiple of companies are approaching you. What would you say is the uh, amount of students that are required in the market with with a stem background well well i think this uh, it's, it's a very difficult question really to answer because the, i don't think there's really uh, good statistics and and on that but uh what we feel is that that what companies require m more and more it's not just technical skills but they want that this uh, student when he's graduating university he's a real problem solver because you know the they have to be able to solve problems and build things and that's it and 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 for this it's not uh, just about technical skills that's it's also about the management skills it's about you know the the promote uh, kind of uh, you know the way you 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 work again in a team etc so so that's why I think it's uh, we need not just talk about STEM as a technical term. It's more about you know how to uh, teach them to um, work as a problem solvers, right? So and and I see this is demand from the companies. We we have started one program with Buffalo University, Latvian University in in ICT in information technologies. So. And that estimate was something that we are uh, missing 3,000 ICT, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, let's say yeah, people w with an ICT background. But I think it's just a very rough estimate. So, so we feel there is a really drive uh, from the companies to, to have and have more students. Uh, so what I, if I just may use sure. this opportunity uh, uh, to say for, for the business people, and uh, it's, it, it's good that there are some companies who are actually working with students uh, in the early stage, but I think we need to have more, more companies engaging with students, supporting, as as uh, John said, supporting all in all ways students with the scholarships. With like I said, we have this program, uh, the Student Innovation Grant program, which is actually done together with the companies, right? So we want that the companies see the need, not just to say, okay. We have to have a you know list of the students when they graduate. No, you have to engage really early stage in education, and in this way, 
you, you, you gain what? You, first of all, you have access to talent, but secondly, you also, uh, while uh, students are studying, they are facing the real problem, real life problems, and this is very, really important for the companies when they are actually go, going to work there. Cool, thank you. Anna, you want to add? Yeah, I wanted to add that um, according to the statistics that I, I've seen uh, that come from the minis ministries is that um, there was an estimate that by 27, 2027, we will lack 14,000 professionals in the tech field. So that's not STEM, that's just tech, just one, the T part of that for, for letter uh, abbreviation. And um, so it's a huge gap in the, in the talent that we have here in Latvia. So the human resources uh, is, is actually the key missing resource in the future. Um, so, uh, and as technology is one of the fastest growing um, industries in uh, in Latvia and I guess all over the world so this is where jobs will not uh, be, be there will be not not less jobs there will be always more jobs and we'll need more people there so that's why STEM is important but STEM is also important for students and actually also for people who want to change their career uh, because it's a well-paid job it's a, um, a smart industry where people are taken care of. So it's um, it's somewhere where we can increase the quality of our lives in, in the society, in the economy, in our country, if we have more people in STEM. And if we look at the statistics uh, from another perspective, so we have, a, uh, I think, a little bit less than 4% of all the workforce is currently employed in tech. Mm -hmm. uh, while in uh, Finland, I think it's uh, close to 8% uh, of, uh, of the, all the employment force. So um, we have a lot of room to grow within the country and uh, we lack people. So uh, we, we should all study STEM, uh, whether we're grown-ups, whether we're students, uh, we should uh, continue to develop our skills and, uh, and, and add uh, this technology part, add, uh, well, problem solving is the base of everything. So I, t I totally agree that problem solving uh, should be there in, in school and high school, um, but yeah, uh, moving and and uh, using every every opportunity to digitalize ourselves is uh, is very important. Cool. Yeah, we will come back to the problem solving topic, but uh, just to make uh, the event more interesting, let's get the audience also to to be involved. So maybe I would uh, do a roll call with uh, different countries. Yes, <laughs> Ine. Well, um, I have a question for all three of you. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Yes, hi, Ina Maring, Norwegian Embassy. Uh, I have a question for all three of you, because you've discussed both the need and demand in the private sector uh, for the experts. Uh, you've discussed how to get the youngsters, and particularly the girls, um, and you are on the reacher side. But in Norway, we also lack the teachers. We don't have the teachers. And the teachers who actually really want to become teachers, if they are good teachers in STEM, the money is not there. So how do we solve this sort of spin where we have the private sector just uh, creating more and more need for it? And then the universities are ready to take it on, but we don't have any teachers for our kids. Yes, you can clap harder. <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> I, I don't know if the audience heard it, but we all had a big sigh. <laughs> like. <sighs> <laughs> Maybe from university, you can. Start. I mean, uh, of course. I mean, I think it's 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 almost like I feel old when I talk about it, right? You know, about money for education system, which has been lacking for twenty and uh, thirty years, and and this is the main reason. And uh, and again, it's it's not just the funding, of course, but uh, but this allows you also to get best teachers. I mean, is it isn't it straightforward, right? If you have uh, funding in place, then you can have more teachers and then can dedicate more time for working with kids at both university and schools. And, and I think what happened during the last year, there has been a lot of reforms in education system. And at, at least from university perspective, I think we, I would say running like switch, switch, uh, switch uh, clock now because we have all, you know, checks and balances in terms how we spend our money. In universities, we have boards, we have everything like we run as a company. 
but what is lacking is is, is a funding part and uh, i think someone uh, the the <laughs> Close to the uh, ministers and, and, and president has to, to raise voice more and more about it. Uh, because what happens, again, uh, from university perspective, uh, the, 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 the universities are living mostly on research money. Okay, So it's good, because then you have a scientist uh, in universities. But then uh, the, 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 the challenge is how to allocate time from research projects really to spend preparing for the lectures, organizing courses and everything, right? So this is a major challenge from, uh, from our point of view. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, the, the sigh was very real about this topic. Um, and I, I think it's a very complex problem, of course, everywhere. Uh, and again, uh, very, very uh, happy to see how some other countries are solving this. Um, but from our experience, so w what we do with Riga Tech Girls is we have a lot of uh, courses that we organize and we get professionals in to teach this. So um, I think the, the, the problem with the money is that uh, if you a good professional in STEM, the private sector will employ you much better and uh, there's l less initiative to teach. Um, but the companies need more STEM people, more people with STEM background. So the company should also be interested that uh, there are teachers who teach this. Um, so if we can get uh, some kind of system together where the uh, professionals also um, go back into the schools, go back into the system and uh, teach about their experience, about their profession. Uh, this is something that uh, could work, uh, especially on the inspiration side, on seeing where I could be, who I could be in future and uh, on understanding how I can get there. Um, but also, mm, uh, probably using technology and uh, making some part of the education more scalable. Um, like we have, we would have a superstar teacher in STEM uh, who might teach not just one class, but might teach a bigger, bigger group. And maybe we can have um, like mentors in place who can be there with the people, with, with the kids, with the, with the school children in place. So kind of innovating education, I think is the only way how we can solve this. Uh, there have been, there are some great initiatives. Um, we had uh, ESP Misia, uh, so it's uh, Teach for All. Uh, in, in other countries uh, where, where um, young professionals are invited to go back to schools and they're given support to be uh, great uh, pedagogy people. Um, so these types of initiatives, I think, should be growing, actually, and especially in STEM, where we're lacking the people. Um, so there, it's a complex problem, but there are some, some ways how we can work on this. Yeah, thank you. Inter. Um, yes, I also do not have a very good answer for that question, how we can get more teachers. But uh, I have two good examples in my um, daily life that my colleagues uh, have changed the career from IT industry to teachers. But they are not teaching in one school because it's not enough money, right? They are teaching in three schools. And more they are doing private, private classes. And that is how they can earn enough money to, to live the the life, yeah. But uh, we as a company, we are doing also this teaching, uh, but we are starting from students. When you are first year student, we are creating academies for students, and we are teaching the the how to say the, the program languages, the tech skills, what we need as a company, and uh, that is what we are doing as a as a private company. Thank you, Ine, for a very good question. So again, everyone in the audience is uh, is welcome to ask questions, but not only ask questions. You're you're also uh, welcome to give your opinion on the questions that have been raised because this is a forum. This is where we all can talk. Uh, Inese, I know you. I no, you had the same. Had the same. <laughs> yes, thank you. Very good. So anyone else uh, wants to have a question? Yeah, good. Um, I would like to go back to this question about um, problem-solving skills. Uh, I think it's uh, it's more or less clear that uh, for the industries need more STEM students and uh, STEM uh, professionals to grow their business. Uh, I think uh, John, maybe you could say how many engineers do you are you lacking at the moment? Excuse me. I think um, we can always use um, more engineers. 
Okay, some more, yeah. Okay, always more. So it's it's a lot more. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that goes uh, for 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 all the countries. This is what I've been discussing with friends from 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 Sweden, Norway, Lithuania, Estonia. We all need more STEM students, and and there's an economic. Uh, uh, reasoning for that, but would like to go back to this topic of uh, problem solving. Problem solving um, is one of the critical aspects that many also mentioned. My question is, uh, do you really need to be a, a STEM engineering, uh, science, uh, mathematics, uh, technology student in order to have this problem solving skills? Or can you also be a, a management law or, or other profession uh, and have these problem solving skills? Or do you still need them? Um, what's your idea? What do you think? I think everybody needs problem solving skills. It doesn't matter which area you come from or which area you're going into. If you can't solve problems, then there will be little use. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think it's a combination. So problem solving is the base of it, but then uh, STEM is just the field that uh, that um, has uh, the highest demand and, uh, and the lowest uh, supply of people at the moment. So yeah, from my side, problem solving is, is, is very important for everyone. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's why, as I mentioned, you have to put uh, in the group people from different backgrounds, the kids and students from different backgrounds. So, because everyone has their own uh, expertise, uh, as regarding the STEM and engineering, I think that the expertise what we are offering is more kind of structured way. You know, you address a problem because you know at the end you have a, your math equation. You know, for everything, right? So it's a, this is kind of when when you go to the technical uh, solutions, right? But still, it's not just again, it's not just about technical. You know, but we learn from, for example, the, the this uh, vertical integrated project courses when they're coming from the school together in in a group, they are not always able really to work as a as as a team and i think so we need to show them that not everyone is equal you know some has one type of skills and another has others so that the the mastery is how to really uh, make them working together and in this sense they learn that the problem solving is not an individual kind of journey it's a it's a way you work with others so uh, and I think that's, I think, partly answers your question, at least. Good, good. good. Ince, yes? Uh, yes, I agree that uh, problem solving requires combination of skills. And in practical daily life, we as a, in our projects, we are solving problems in teams. Like, not in like a solution teams, but in teams, teamwork, yeah? And maybe some, some, some employees are better in communication, maybe some is better in text, but we are together solving these problems. Good, thank you. Questions? Um, and I go on with mine. Okay, yeah, you have. Good. Yeah, hi, Timo Stein from Norway. Hi. Um, yeah, can you talk about, so this is the university mainly, um, you touched upon it, but how much do you teach your STEM students about commercialization and innovation? And this sort of ties in what you just talked about, because it's not just that you can solve math equations or algorithms, but that you can work together, so this is a soft skill, but also that you understand uh, commercial problems, because there's a lot of exciting tech, but it may not address a market need right now. Yeah, I think I can talk about hours because we have several instruments, as I said, to support uh, entrepreneurship uh, skills. I'm talking business incubator, accelerators, and so everything is, is there. But of course, uh, what is very important to realize that we are talking about early stage, right? So because uh, uh, what is very important when uh, we they, they learn this uh, you know, skills, how to build the company, Actually, by the way, the first uh, business incubator, high-tech incubator in, in Latvia was together with Norwegian uh, fund. And the first unicorn in Latvia w comes from this business incubator, which, which was between uh, Norway, uh, RTU and Latvian University. Just just a side note, you know. So he, uh, the guy, of, of course, he started with completely different idea, uh, <laughs> you know, but now he's a unicorn. I'm talking about the Printful. Uh, so, and and uh, and uh, so, what we try to do is that we 
encourage students to join these programs, like you know, business incubators. And then uh, what we are, I think, lacking is that the next stage, right? Because I had a chance to visit US for 20 days, uh, exac exactly, uh, you know, um, understanding the system there. The, the, the private investment in the next stage, when you build a company in Europe is somewhat, and especially in Latvia, is not so great. I mean, venture capital and, and this, this kind of risk capital is, is missing, which is very sim different in US. So I think we need more of the private uh, risk capital helping, or not helping, investing, they're not helping, <laughs> the investing in the in the this uh, good uh, uh, maybe at the beginning very small companies and allowing them to grow so i think this is the key but yeah we do a lot and in general we have about we have about 1000 we have 15000 students altogether it's about 2000 something like that are engaged actively in in, in exactly what you're asking about um I think we will be going into the coffee break in, in, in 10 minutes, uh, so maybe a few more questions. Uh, one what that I would like to be discussing more, uh, which I've been involved a lot for the past 10 years in, in building the science centers, but how do you think uh, uh, we can promote the interest in STEM? What can we do to get more students interested uh, in STEM? I, I don't remember who said it in the beginning, but we have this uh, big uh, um, big social movement of uh, YouTubers and influencers around there uh, who are telling you can become whoever you want, and but not everyone will become a YouTuber at the end, right? Um, so how can we get more students uh, interested in this? Being a STEM uh, uh, professional is not uh, it's not easy. You have to learn math and material sciences or chemistry and so on. So it's it's hard. How can we get them motivated to get involved uh, in in STEM and at what age should we start? Anna, yes. Um, okay. Um, so I mentioned before. So it's it's uh, the good role models. So showing um, what you could be, what you could become, and. Um, in this case, yeah, I think the uh, mass media has uh, has been focusing on some other things in the past uh, decades, um, but more and more shows have also been happening uh, around the STEM uh, subject. And now, with the rise of um, of this uh, individualistic media, where anyone can create uh, content, um, we can still kind of. Uh, try to talk about what what are the smart things to do. Um, for example, I think like policies have been done around uh, ecology and uh, making, uh, well, talking about uh, living um, uh, more in, intact with the, with the environment. So uh, a lot of these individuals who are also building content on these platforms, they're talking about this environment issues and they have become quite popular. And in, in among the youth, uh, environment is a high topic. Diversity is a high topic. Um, um, I don't know. There, there are new topics springing up. There is, uh, um, you know, sexual liberation and and all these kind of topics. And uh, STEM is not there, but it should be, uh, because everything is becoming technological, and everyone uh, should be interested in STEM. And STEM is the future. So how do we um, kind of facilitate that it's a kind of in this pop culture that uh, STEM is exciting and interesting? So that's that's something uh, that we could we could think of more strategically, um, and uh, maybe it can be done also on a, on a, a state level, on institutional level. And once it's it's a, a big buzzword around those areas, it also naturally comes into the uh, into the pop culture as well. So that's that that's one part. And I think the other thing is that. Um, Kids need to believe in themselves. Uh, so that's also about the approach uh, in education. Uh, STEM subjects are hard. And uh, it's hard to believe in yourself if you are not succeeding. So how can we uh, create this uh, process of learning that kids are not afraid of the bad marks? I mean, this is the big debate we've been having here in Latvia. Should the exams in STEM, sh uh, should they be uh, mandatory? 
And uh, since they're not mandatory, very few kids take them. Uh, and if we make them mandatory, uh, what will that mean? So kind of this, there should be a united um, opinion from, from the state that STEM is important, kids should learn it, and um, having, well, and, and there we actually come back to the question about the teachers as well, because of course the, there is huge resistance uh, for this mandatory exam because there are no teachers who can prepare the kids. Um, so we need to be innovative in this. We need to create ways how kids can learn, uh, can believe in themselves that they can do STEM, and, uh, and, and then uh, combined with some inspiration, I think that, that, that's the way it could work. Uh, yeah, thank you. Talos. No, tiles. I agree. I mean, um, the, 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 there are two things that we could do. Is uh, I agree regarding the, the teachers, right? It happened with me. I, I was, uh, was when I was studying in high school. I studied in, in you know math school, like uh, where we have a lot of math. But our teacher was so ins you know inspirational. So and you just start to like it. Right? I don't know how they did it, <laughs> but you just start, start to like it and that's why you chose engineering, okay? So I think it's about how the teachers are actually approaching the, the way they teach math and physics and everything. And secondly, I think it's also about what you are doing and, and you know, building these kind of centers just to, to show that this is fun, you know, to, to, to work with this kind of hard things engineering and science is, is really fun. So I think these two things are very, very important. Int, you have anything to add? Yes, I agree with colleagues for 100 percent. But uh, one, one, one mark from my side that uh, for me, for me always is important to touch something, to feel something about what I'm interested in. If someone is interested in STEM, he needs to be able to, to participate in something, to create something interesting, to, to see a result of that, to be a part of the team. And then that's great that you have, you will, you have here in CESIS a center, you will have center and in event spills, and we need more places where on a countryside even, the child can go and be, be a part of something in real, in practical life. Thank you. Um, it's actually good. Let me let me answer my own question as well. <laughs> it's uh, it's so good um, to hear that you you are promoting our uh, science centers. Uh, but I also want to mention that we have uh, science centers coming up in Daugavpils, uh, in, in in Liepaja, and also in Riga uh, with Riga Technical University. <laughs> Yes, um, and um, uh, and I think that's a good example. And and, and you confirmed uh, what what we've been seeing for for many years now that when kids get emotional, when the kids have fun of doing robots or coding or or launching rockets or doing chem chemistry or whatever, when it's fun for them, when they get involved, that's that's the best way how, how to get them in STEM. Um, any more questions? We have a little bit more of like five minutes. Uh, oh yeah, there is. Go on. Yeah, I'm Stefan Eriksson of the Nordic Council Minister's Office. I just a follow-up question to, to the discussion on, on what is the role of, of, of the state and, and government in, in encouraging STEM? Uh, I mean, should the state and government take a more stricter position? I mean, in, let's say, financing more uh, uh, academic education in this area and less than ed education in other fields uh, that may not necessarily lead to employment and job. Uh, I mean, this uh, comes in a conflict maybe with, you know, free will. Uh, uh, students may want to study other things, but, but uh, if the government would, would send a clearer message with offering more education in this area, would this help to some extent, you think? It would be interesting to hear your comments. Thank you. So if, if I may start, then um, I think it's a question of economic it's, a, it's an economic question, actually. So where we have overproduction, we should have less opportunities. And where we have uh, scarcity, we should have more opportunities. So that's quite logical. I think that's one. Um, but if we think about the state, then um, it definitely makes a big impact on what are the state's priorities. And we see those in the budget. That's one, one part. But we also can see them in other strategic ways. And if we look at uh, what is Latvia and who, are, who is a Latvian, what, what, does, what does a Latvian look like? So Latvians uh, sing and dance, that Latvians have cuisine, which is very tasty. 
Um, but I, I, I wouldn't think first that, oh, Latvians are STEM people. Um, but we could be. We definitely could be. And for future com um, competitiveness of our country, we should be. Um, so kind of thinking of these ways, how we can help our, oursel ourselves see us as STEM people, not just dancers, singers and cookers and uh, maybe, uh, you know, culture people, which we are uh, actually very good and internationally. Um, so science, engineering, technology, this is something that we can develop because we have the brain and we actually have a good also historic uh, system in this. We have scientists, we have a lot of good base for that. Uh, but we need to believe that as well so that we can be the same people. And this is something that I think state can do. And it could be it could come in different uh, types of initiatives. Uh, but one example that I can just bring up is that um, so there is, there is this uh, out of school activities and uh, science centers is an amazing um, initiative here developing. But for example, if I look at the opportunities that are paid by a municipality in Riga, there is little technology there. There's a lot of dancing, there's a lot of singing, and there's very little technology. And there has been a constant kind of uh, friction between uh, some NGOs who try to talk more about this, that there should be more technology in uh, uh, paid by the city council that kids can go to um, but uh, then there is like there are those who fight for culture and they say oh you're taking away our dance and sing classes which yeah singing and dancing is important but then if we can go back to this economic results then uh, STEM might be uh, more important than it is considered now. So there are these, these, these ways how I think states and, and the governments can get involved. You forgot uh, from singing and dancing also mushroom picking. Yeah? So <laughs> it's an important aspect. But there, I don't think there is a club or like uh, s s paid by the pay, paid by the government. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, mushroom picking. Uh, and there is science behind it. So. <laughs> Yes, Dallas, maybe you I, could. I think that the state can actually influence it. And I agree, this should be the choice, of course. You shouldn't, like, you know, insist, uh, like, uh, you know, everyone has to become, you know, Nobel Prize winner or something. Uh, I think what what's examples we have in a world like in South uh, Korea, all right, there's a lot of support. And, and, and uh, yeah, and also Singapore, for example, there's a lot of support at early stage for the kids, I think they're starting in the third grade, uh, about science, about engineering, they just support them more, right? And then the kids, when they are growing, they're choosing, right? So, and and in, I think these countries, and you can find other examples, is showing that it's possible by influencing, you know, the, the way we fund the schools, what are the priorities you can make the, uh, the difference, right? And as, of course, we have to. Uh, 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 thank you, John, for for mentioning Sanders. And uh, but we have also Nobel Prize winners in Latvia. Actually, the only one in Baltic states uh, uh, who is uh, uh, who, who got a Nobel Prize is, is from 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 Riga. Uh, and there are other um, role models we have to promote. Uh, coming from Latvia and, and talking about this also at, in the school and saying this is your, your chance. Yeah, thank you. Ins, do you want to add? Should the government impose more? I believe government uh, should learn from businessmen. Uh, you know, uh, when you have a goal, where you are going, when you know what you need to achieve, you simply draw a plan, draw activities, set priorities, and then invest in, in and, and do to get there. <laughs> very <laughs> good, it. very efficient. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Inter.